Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at two topics, the cancellation of debt and the taxation of prizes and awards. Both of these items are listed on Schedule 1, which is additional income and adjustments, and all additional income is added, then transferred flow to other income on line 1040. So what does that mean? It means cancellation of debt and prices of prizes and awards are taxable. However, there's always exception to the rules, and this is what we need to talk about. Starting with prizes and awards. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. The first thing I want you to think about when you think of prizes and award is this picture here, which is Matt Murphy, a college student from Queen, and Barry Bonds, the baseball player. Now, Matt Murphy caught the home run, the 756 home run for Barry Bonds. And as a result, that catch was worth $600,000. So the baseball that he catches is worth $700,000. Can he keep it? Sure he can. You can keep it. However, you received a prize for $600,000. What do you have to do at the end of the year? Well, you have to compute your taxes. And let's assume 20%. Your tax bill will be 120000 Most likely, you know, 600000 is approximately 30%. So you have to pay. If you want to keep that ball, that's fine. But you have a tax bill of 180000 Now, some value the ball at, you know, the baseball at 500000 some 600000 But to make the point is, if you receive any sort of a prize or an award, generally speaking, there's always an exception, you have to pay taxes on that. How can someone get out of it? How can someone get out of this prizes and award? Well, they're included in the taxpayer gross income at fair value. However, an exception applies if all the following conditions are met. Well, let's take a look at the all the conditions. The price or the award is received in recognition of religious, charitable, scientific, educational, artistic, literacy, literally civic achievement. For example, Nobel Prize, faculty teaching award, so on and so forth. Two, the recipient immediately transferred the price prize or award to a qualified governmental unit or non-profit organization. So, okay, that's fine. You received it, but you are going to transfer it immediately. And the recipient was selected without any action on his or her part to enter the contest or the proceeding. So simply put, you won this award, you did not even ask for it. Also, the recipient is not required to render substantial future service as a condition for receiving the prize or, or the award. And simply put, just make sure we understand this, that if you have to work for this award, it becomes earnings, then it's taxable. So you have to meet all of these four conditions. And what's the easiest one to do? Avoid the inclusion by rejecting. Just say, thank you very much. I reject the award. You don't have to be responsible for it. So this is what you would do as well. Something close close to prizes and awards are damages, damages awards. What's damages award? Well, if you if somebody did something wrong to you and let's assume you have a business and someone ran and ran their car into your business and you have to close for a week. Well, guess what? You're going to be receiving damage award from the insurance company or from the insurance company of the plaintiff. Well, a damage award that represents compensation for lost profit since your store was closed, guess what? That's gross income that the IRS wants you to pay taxes on. You didn't get it from your store, but you got it from the award. Punitive damages. If you sue someone because they ruined your reputation, that's punitive. Well, loss for personal reputation should also be included in gross income.
Now let's talk about the cancellation of debt. And what's the cancellation of debt? It's, it's when someone forgive the debt that you owe them. They basically say, forget about it. We don't want your money. We don't want the money. You that's it. Let's call a closed case. Now let's talk about the cancellation of debt. What's the cancellation of debt? Is when the taxpayer debt is cancelled or forgiving. Well, they should report this as taxable income for the amount of the debt. Let's assume you owe five thousand dollar on your credit card and it was forgiving. Well, guess what? That five thousand dollar becomes income to you. An exception occurs when the debt is discharged because the taxpayer is insolvent. And what is insolvent? It means you have negative equity. What is negative equity? It means you have more debt than assets. This is when you have negative equity in which the cancellation of the debt is not taxable. Well, guess what? You don't have money to pay anything, let alone pay taxes on that additional income. Also, uh, canceled non-recourse secured loan. That's also that's also uh, uh, an exception. Foreclosure on your main residency, on your main home. So if they took your home because you lost your job or whatever the reason is, it's treated as a sale. It's treated as a sale. It's not a forgiveness of debt. Basically, you don't have to include this. Also, forgiving student loan by lender, by, for example, the financial institution, from 2021 through 2025 are not included in income. Let's take a look at this example. Jane borrowed $20,000 from ABC Bank to purchase a car. That's great. The loan was payable over a period of four years. In the middle of the fourth year, Jane lost her job and defaulted on the loan. Well, what would, what would Jane do? She negotiated with the bank to see if they can cancel the remaining balance, which was 3,500. The bank did agree. Well, if they do cancel your balance, they will send you a form called 1099C. And they would, they would report the 3,500 in addition, in addition to your wages as taxable, as taxable income. Now, I was in practice the year 2006 up to 2009. And if you remember anything, we had the financial crisis. And in 2009, we had a lot of 1099Cs. So I saw a lot of 1099Cs because businesses were defaulting, especially construction companies, they were defaulting on their assets. So it's something I, I, I was pretty familiar with, with this for 1099C. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, multiple choice, true, false. That's gonna help you, whether you are a CPA candidate or an enrolled agent student or an accounting student, invest in yourself, invest in your career. Accounting is worth it. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.